Welcome to lesson 15.2, Entropy and Spontaneity. First of all, what is entropy? Entropy is the state of randomness. You can see that if you make your bet your uh, room nice and clean, uh, the general uh, law is things will tend to go towards uh, randomness and get more and more messy. Uh, so here we have uh, something that's lined up. Uh, that's what we say has less entropy. And these are all mixed up, so it has more entropy. The IB definition here is the measure of distribution of total available energy between particles. Um, so that the greater the disorder here, the greater the entropy. So it's a degree of randomness, a degree of disorder. Here we have um, this system here. You could think of it as the energy that would be required to get all of these things into a ordered system. Um, and so this here uh, has taken energy. So the entropy to uh, separate this out, uh, you could think of as entro uh, entropy. So uh, examples of entropy. Now, uh, the most important one is the states. Uh, so a gas has more entropy than a liquid, and a liquid has more entropy than a solid. Uh, other things we can think of, uh, here's the states here, is increasing in temperature. You can see the entropy increase is quite small. Uh, but when there's a change of state, there's a massive increase in entropy. Particles and temperature increases are important, but always look at the, the states because they are moving so randomly and quickly in the gaseous form uh, that that entropy is much, much greater than an uh, increase in temperature or increase in number of particles. Uh, the equation to remember here is uh, products minus reactants. Uh, that's because uh, we want reactants go to products. Uh, just as in delta H the arbitrary value for exothermic was negative uh, and that was uh, spontaneous uh, we want here uh, entropy to increase and so the spontaneous conditions for that are positive uh, and so if the reactants we want the products to be more positive and the reactants to be less positive uh, and so for delta S uh, we're going to take the products minus the reactants uh, and that will be positive for the most ideal situation because the products will have more in, more entropy. Alright, uh, so uh, decomposition reactions also increasing the number of particles, dissolution increasing the randomness are other uh, things that you should look at and immediately think that's going to have a positive entropy. Uh, you also must remember uh, to grab when you get your entropy values times it by the number of moles in the equation. So going to a calculation now. Uh, calculate the entropy, entropy change for this reaction here. Now first of all as always we write out the formula uh, then we uh, substitute with the symbols first. You can see I've written a half there uh, for the oxygen. Uh, the rest are one so that's easy. We go to the data booklet and we get our values and uh, we substitute those numbers in and the answer is minus 163.3 kilojoules per mole. So how do you know a reaction is going to occur? Another quite powerful thing uh, in chemistry is it's called Gibbs free energy. So as I mentioned before uh, exothermic releases energy and makes the products more stable um, and the bond entropy will increase, uh, so that's negative. Uh, temperature increasing is also something that usually helps a reaction because it overcomes activation energy. Uh, so we'll learn about that next unit. And this we want this to increase in randomness as well. So these arbitrary values have made this obviously negative. So you can tell if something's going to occur if the delta G, the Gibbs free energy, is negative. Okay, so the word we use is spontaneous and non-spontaneous. Here's a summary of um, the equations you've learnt so far. Uh, you've done enth uh, enthalpy, entropy and Gibbs. And this here is, uh, Gibbs is just very similar to uh, entropy because you want the products uh, to be as negative as possible and the reactants not to be very negative. Uh, and so this minus this uh, will give you the most negative value if it's very negative. So as with all these um, 
delta H of combustion, delta H of formation, delta H of bond enthalpies. Uh, use the definition to work out the formula, whether it's products minus reactants or reactants minus products. Uh, so here's a summary here. Uh, you want delta H to be uh, negative. You want entropy to be positive. You want delta G to be negative. Uh, so we can have a look at various reactions uh, up here. And so if delta H is negative, that's a good thing. All right. Uh, but if the delta S is negative, then it's uh, sorry, positive. They're both the good things. So that's always going to work, always going to be spontaneous, and always going to be negative. Uh, however, if the delta S is negative, you can see here this from uh, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. If this is very negative, uh, but this is also negative, that's going to make this positive. Uh, so that will overtake that once the delta S has gotten large enough. All right, um, or if you increase the temperature. So if you increase the temperature, you will, it's another way of increasing the delta S. So there will be a point where increasing the temperature will be big enough so that that positive value will overtake this negative value. Um, having a look here, delta S, uh, delta H positive is not what we want, so that's not going to be spontaneous. Uh, and negative is not what we want always, oh, so that's uh, always positive, so it's never spontaneous. Again, have a look at this confusing, more confusing one here. Uh, if the delta S is positive, which, which we want, and the delta H is positive, which is, which is what we don't want. Uh, again, if we have delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, uh, this is positive, so it's not going to work, but this is positive. Uh, so if you, you can for the reaction, you can have different delta S's, so that could just be enough to overtake it, or you could uh, significantly increase the temperature uh, to a point where that positive, well, in effect, because of this negative sign, this of this absolute value here becomes bigger than this absolute value, and so the whole thing moves over into negative, and delta G will work. Uh, so you need to be aware, you need to know the complexities of these delta S's and delta H's to work out uh, in what situations the reaction will or will not occur. Looking at another problem again, this is working out Gibbs free energy for combustion. Uh, there are many ways to do these equations as you've seen now. Uh, so for this one here, we will use the equation delta G's products minus reactants. Again, the number of moles are important, so put the moles in there and get the values from your data booklet. Substitute those values in and you'll get 129, uh, 1,299 kilojoules per mole. Problem two, uh, the formula you can get from your data booklet here. Uh, so formula written out. Uh, this one's fairly easy because the delta H and delta S is given to you, but as you know from this unit, you could be asked to work those out uh, from experimental values or other information. Uh, so substitute those in. Uh, you get a positive uh, delta G, so make sure you write clearly if it's spontaneous or not spontaneous in your answer.